There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passage. Do you really? You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself, got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Fear and apprehension. You should ask what's out there first. Yes, your one disco mother. There's this giant ball there. An evil apes. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. Infinitesimally small. You can't even make out it's a ball when you're juking it out. It's that large. Fine for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meat around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. You can take it. You're a champion. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. You reach out to grab the tie. But what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. 
doom. This is bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from for quite a long time. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to st Finally, the pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move, hoping it will keep you from dying. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Oh no, it's happening again. You didn't catch it, and now there's a numbness in your l It's even worse this time. Maybe you should stop trying to catch still happening. Definitely worse than finally the stabbing recedes. You could try doing it again to see how painful it gets. But you would probably die. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can press the lights are off. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cup. It says, whirling in rags, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Don't be scared. It's only your face. It's not like anyone's going to see it. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. Oh my God. You can't stop. It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? You are correct. This fan has two chain pull switches. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend. And...
The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now the cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Uh, no? There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Because you're a police officer, sir. I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Could it be because of the drinking? Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. She looks back at you, a light glinting. Goodbye.
A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. A competent work of taxidermy, the white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs, one of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? Am I? Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? No, you see, actually, you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for... As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand. In if an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative, conceptualize. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. Okay then. It looks like we had a little skidding error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be... Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse, much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. After you, officer. 
If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your pond. bed is cold and not particularly inviting. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night after 9 p.m. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face. The window stands bright. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's... This fan has two... Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You... Impressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns. Mr. Gart, right? You run this. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. Are you kidding me? It's you. It's obviously you. You sp See? Everyone agrees it's your color scheme. We're on the right track with- Is this what you get when you call the police now? We've been waiting for a week here! Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Yes, of course. For a moment, the cafeteria manager fidgets under the lieutenant's gaze. Then, he gives in. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call, correct? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. You said you just got here. From where? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are. But as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. I have everything. You? The body was behind the building, right? How do we get there? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. And how do we get there? See that door there? Go out and turn right. There's a... There's a big hole in the fence. No need for a key. Just go through that hole and you'll be in the courtyard. Are you supposed to feel guilty about the hole? 
Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. The IIR, or Interisolary Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right, money. You owe this establishment 130 real. Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but... We'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And what are you, a philosopher? Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room or, or eight bottles of potent blend and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Officer, maybe you're better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them, ask for assistance. We have to- Good luck. Dress is coming up, but you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? Why did you say that? No. But isn't that an expression? Not a place? A saying. Up on Marvel Hill. A great high place. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A close. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not. Mm. We can sit on benches. Huh? You can revisit the bench. Before you stands a motor carriage. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It ha this must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. 
In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. The frequency tableau lights up, and the soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I... Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Of course. What is the number, officer? Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. Quite a lot of time has passed. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. No, not me. What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the court. No one calls the police. The Union would get angry. You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Garbage. Legally, no. In reality, yes. Martinez is de facto policed by the Dock Workers' Union. The words are not necessary to feel the lieutenant's discontent for the situation. Mm-hmm. I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. The other people who live around here. Local people, I... I didn't want trouble. Her voice is resigned and weak. You don't live here. You don't understand. Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with. Well, by the Union, internally. Please, I just didn't want any trouble. You do? Oh, what else can I do for you? No, sorry, I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Yeah, go on. You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm... not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. I... uh... That's to say I left because I needed to get away from someone. You know whom? You think you hear a sliver of accusation in her words. Don't be paranoid. She's obviously talking about someone else, not you. Maybe, I don't know. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her. 
at the whirling in rags when she was still working there. I'm not mad, it's just you were so drunk and so emotional all the time and then the skua thing happened. It just made me want to quit. Yes, obviously, you were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I, I hate it now. We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant, and I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about how you're actually a real cool guy, and no one understands it. One of the coolest guys there is. The coolest guy in Jamrock. Something about disco, too. And then I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. I, oh, the ones I had to wrench out of your toilet. I, damn it, I don't remember what I did to your damn papers. I don't remember every little thing I do. Especially when there's a hurricane loose, it's your fault for losing them, not- Something in you wants to immediately forget about this, as if there was a reason you threw them away. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. God, I- I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. The stuffed bird, the great skua, you threw it against the wall while screaming, fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. It was a pretty bird, there since I started working in Whirling. I really like her. We call her Scotty. There's genuine sadness in her voice. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook. A Simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. It's the jam, my man. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, and all around clusterfuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo. For days upon days upon days. Upon. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. 
Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole- Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? He ain't one of us drivers, I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark. The man taps his fingers. Don't be a stranger. stands in the middle of the traffic island. A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip the Third. There's not a good track record of mental health in that family. Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers. The suzerain, his own maladministration, foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revel. Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber, where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, are, he called it the Sol Auron. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers like some obese dragon. It's, but wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. That's what the revolutionary said 150 years later. His majesty's courtiers said it helped him connect with the higher realms. Cocaine. Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, thrown, the original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships, during the turn of the century revolution, when Martinez was leveled. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved them. Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rivershaw in the poorest part of the city. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. People in Martinez tend to disagree. 
as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders. With more nuanced social awareness, Philip III, the squanderer, however, small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A f the photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... No response, wherever this woman is. Your words fail to reach her. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles. Their logo is the Bloodless Rose. Um, just ask me if you need anything from St. Batiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nosafed, Duramine, Magnesium and Hypnogamma. St. Batiste, you know, the pharmaceuticals company. St. Batiste Pharmaceuticals, the one that sells meds out of St. Batiste. That she is right. St. Batiste, the company derives its name from Saint Baptiste, the city. It the tear machine stands in the- hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The... A colourful display of cigarettes and alcohol there, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, Alcohol. Love. Alcohol. Welcome to Rivachol. Don't you welcome to Rivachol me? My grandfather came here from a 3,000-year-old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in the city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Rivachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here? That I should watch myself and behave? But you see, I'm an officer of the RCM. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that... Silence. The air between the your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine.
You do make a cute couple. You know that? The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Whatever you say, officers. Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe? Huh? When members of the superiore cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. The problem? The damn kips are showing a real good game lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other introduced species too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. It's what the kips of Boogie Street are going for, right under our noses. And the others too, on the radio. Heard any chanson lately? Heard any mototos or leader? No. Dominating culture is how they plan to win. This, it's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birth place? You might end up with a new sub-race, with unknown characteristics, leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the offspring. Don't push your luck. The RCM in Matinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Me? I am just a gardener. I am working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. There's discomfort. She stops mid-sentence. As you probably know, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Th of course. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Sir, step right in. The store is open. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell book. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know?
This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is... A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. Under the graffito, you know this to be the star of Perikonesis, or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonesian church, a star, a great moral height. To be the church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. This coin-operated viewer is facing... This coin-operated viewer Sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance. This is a wall on the side of an apartment. There must be another way into the building. Hey, what's that noise down there?
You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the Try to find something pretty and cool here. Then use it to win her back. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse? A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say Fawn. Oh, that's the headless Fawn rider. There's been a lot of interest in that particular figurine. I had to hide it so it wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. He doesn't elaborate on these wrong hands. It's unlikely that he ever will. I've heard about it. I've heard the Headless Fawn Rider ride the Headless Bull. Yes, there are several competing versions of the story. The Headless Fawn Rider. It's an urban legend. About a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a fawn tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. Fifty cents. Bargain price. I'll throw in the tiny cap too. I think he's looking for it. Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you. That was a very smooth salesman's... on the shelf look well loved. One especially catches your eye. The this is you. Golden orange. A sunset suite. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech. Is the Harman Walshi W2. Made in Vespa. Designed in Seoul. Plays all reel-to-reel -reel format. Indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a... You pull the lever all the way up until the metal clicks against nothing happens. A spring brings the lever back to its original position. You still need to close the water lock to get across the canal. Wasn't there a sign over there saying functionality will be restored on Wednesday morning? Good morning to you, officers. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carving up a generous serving of salon. I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again... The words, dear devil driver, sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is clo It's supposed to operate the water lock, but as noted, it's all junk right now. Safety measure. Turns out the panel needs a special key to be reactivated. Wouldn't want anyone moving the water lock with debris still in the channel. It'll be restarted on Wednesday morning. Great! Just drop in on Wednesday if you want to see the water lock at work. The coast part of the map is inaccessible until the third day. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles. You see two lowly, defeated speakers. Thralls. Slaves, basically. Per I can see you have a taste for luxury. There are clothes in... Don't be shy. 
you find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. No good. All you can come up with are some treated wool. No luck? Why not take another look, officer? Keep some... Dented yellow milk. The lorry stuck in the windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see. A lorry man, the driver, has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclam, the back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. Racist nationalist paraphernalia, not unusual in this part of town. Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is, drapes it all over his machine. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop's cab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here, to the wild north? Come to see the strife? Hello, sweetie. Wait, who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. And have you found anyone to be sweet to? You rascal. <laughs> I'm too old for you, and too married besides. Your advances haven't thrown her off one bit. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the 
the spot. Whatever do you mean? Ah, yes. Probably roll with me by the Fletchers. People often quote the Fletchers at me. Of course, dear. Good luck. There is no answer. You hear the sh a tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door is indifferent. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of take viscera on the carpet. Or no problem, officer. This fan has all has it been consigned there as This trash container is locked. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the... The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence too. What do you mean, feel? Mm-hmm. We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably... There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. What do you think you are? A super detective? Your heavy worker's boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Not it. An 
inconspicuous pile of the roof. It's nothing. Someone. Kuno's got this! If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. Oh yeah! Napa Goofy Kuno! Can't talk, pig! Shit's coming up strong! Throwing rocks! Shit coming up strong? That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit... I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, kid! Kuno's riding at sea. The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. Fuck no! Kuno doesn't buy that shit. Fucking entrapment shit. Alright, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno! If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not. You have no idea what the usual is. Just ask whatever comes to mind. Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. You heard Kuno? Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking... Mesk or, or, I don't know, some other place? Night City? Kuno is in fucking Night City. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been? You wanna know where Kuno was? You wanna know what Kuno's been fucking up to? Don't tell him that, Kuno! It's lame! It's not fucking lame! Kuno's building Kuno City, Night City, Raid City, the city of rage. That's it. And it's not lame. Lame. That's the name of Kuno City, bitch. Get the fuck off Kuno's back. This shit ain't about that. Kuno's fuck imp. Kuno uses the fuck imp for target practice. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Ku You're testing Kuno's patience here. Yeah. Get lost, f Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Don't be wondering about Kuno's shit, pig. What does Kuno care about your hunch? That's... Don't know. Kip Das Gardener used to work there. Kip is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eriopagite descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eriopagites of Ilmara. Not yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit, nothing to Kuno. Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. Yeah, her. No, it's not fucking Kuno's. It's ancient. Look at- He thinks you're fucking full, Kuno. He says you climb the ladder up to your magic tree house. Get the fuck out of here, pig. Kuno doesn't have a magic tree house. That's just some shit roofing gimps left behind, lazy dinks. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno doesn't... The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. 
You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Active decay. It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow, Kuno! Officer, how are things? Excuse me? She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. Oh, well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. Okay. The tear machine stands in the corner. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. No, you need tear to use. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheated. This is the Coupris Kinema, my motor carriage. Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with a motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. Yes, sorry about that. The Coupris Kinema does have a rather distinctive engine sound. He says it with very badly concealed pride. The Cupris motorcar does provide most of our patrol vehicles. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a metallic drawer slides out from... Take what you need, officer. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Useful for opening all sorts of... The handles are long and it's robust. Let's you see th the pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Pre this is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Just a second, officer. 10-2, 10-5. Uh, a scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking. The man uses relay code. 10 message received, 10 fire. 10 18, state your message, sir. 10 9, over. 10 4, message received. This is a very serious situation. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? This is communication officer Jules Pidius. You mean your partner? Over. What is he saying? He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. It's your partner, satellite officer Vitmar, sir. Over. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not defend yourself immediately. They laugh at you. Just 
Then for I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost it! What's going on? Super cop here, lost... He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Captain Nine, come again. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun, too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost... Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? Okay, it's gone. Your gun... Captain Nine, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Lying? Over the phone? It's easy. Just say it. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. We can't have... We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance. Over. Send for, I hear you. What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole any. Right. Uh, that's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. Anything else, sir? Roger that. 18 kilometers to the south, in the 41st Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages, and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? What happened is my partner made contact, and it's not good. He's lost his badge. He seemed confused, delirious even. Mac, the torso Torson, is finger-fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean. Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking... Yeah, Mac's right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before he started begging for money, it was... Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on carrot juice? He's a lo- I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. Mac, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. I guess I can hold off the report for a few days. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quite... Can I help you? Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rack. Thank you for clearing the debt. Why do you keep- Why? 
to keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors, too. They put their trash there, and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. Prod at him and find out. What do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a with a well-oiled crack. The lock pops open. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. There is, but you won't like it. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. You see, milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Soleil cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaverino door is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Guitar-marked blue jeans. Pockets. Empty. Or emptied. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but the belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? Something slimy catches your eye. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste. This is a military-type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of ribbed shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. In the rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. The fuck's he on about, kids? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or... See? Not really. All we know is... The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple, nothing. It's nothing. Nothing. What's this? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes, written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? Yes, it is. Look. This plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form. If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? Understood. Be untroubled. If anything, this small moment has made him respect you more. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. Only in its social sensibility. Mm hmm You've acquired an interactable item. 
Investigate this item further by going to the Interact tab in your inventory. The container sounds are muffled gone. That's one thing off the list. You said you didn't want to talk about the ledger. However, now that you have it back, it would not hurt to start taking notes on the case. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there? A the plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is with your hands. You four sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. Mm. The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned. The slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just... You, without resistance or sound, the two, two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The ticket, thin wax paper, has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Luke, a young woman in her twenties. There is care, effort, and a smile, you think. Although that is not something you can read. Harry, it begins. You're already reading. I wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe throw it away, please. A merciful wind blows in from the Bay of Revachon, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel frisson covers your entire body, a feeling of cold, a persistent chill. Your hands shake, holding onto it. Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, it says, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon, when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. You, you. Every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes, I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Kisses, kisses, kisses. You feel the air sucked out of your lungs, and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. No, no, hold on. To what? Detective, is everything all right? There is nothing. Again. Nothing said, brother. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you. That's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering. Somewhere in the basal ganglia. That's me. Blue eyes, that's me. Who was what? He speaks of the sickening longing. The unwell emotion. 
Even in the darkness, he's grasping for it. Still trying to hold on to the great sorrows slipping in the water. Slimy. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Because it's always there. Bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. Beautiful. There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It's all on. Poor, you think they would let you. Until you descend. Yes, they're pouring something on you. It's delicious. Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. The upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water. Drink. Water. The water is cold, silvery. The stuff of life itself as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding in your head recedes. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You need a secondary form of hydration. With greedy gulps, you down half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. What happened? That does sometimes happen. You dropped these. Are you okay to proceed? Good. The Ledger of Failure and Hatred is a special item that can be used both as an interactable and a tool equipped in your held slot for skill bonuses. Find it under the Tools tab in your inventory. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read? Oh boy, here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? There they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Like two baby crocodiles. Good, they're balanced, comfy. you thanks I hope you found what you were looking for how strange I certainly didn't put them there Sylvie had the keys before I got here and I can vouch for her I can vouch for all my stuff none of us would tamper with the crime scene the trash collection service CS municipal I don't see why they would Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Thank you anyway. Yes?
There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse. Active decay. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow! Active decay. He's about to blow! There he still is. Look. Fuck, does Kuno care? The fuck about it? Your test. Get lost! F yeah? The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do you want with it? Look at that fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his... It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. Listen, listen! Kuno doesn't care about this small-time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. Pig, these are foul modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in Mirova by scientists. Pants, scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. Coach Physical Instrument endorses these pants. They are tartan ready. They will also make you into an idiot. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around, except for that f up there. Now you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains silent, but his expression couldn't say, I told you so. Whatever. Kuno was trying to help you, but you're too fat for fun anyway, pig. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you pigs are after the mug fucker? Cause he's the clothes fucker? I can't hear you, Kuno! Speak louder, Kuno! Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beat-down basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he would- Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno f yeah, get your bacon shit away. Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo. Get your sh Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno doesn't... curtains blocking the way to another room. A Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only.
These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen. Oh, crime fiction is a disgrace. And asinine, these books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's funeral pyre. The murder of Dick Mullen. Oh no, turns out he fated to solve a case. Yes, there's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tale tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. Come on, this is not the way real police solve crimes. The real police are some 20 kilometers away, sitting in an armored motor carriage. Come on, Chester, tell the story again. Again? Man, I tell that one at least once a month. The fuck it is. And these guys haven't heard it. You see, Chester here. Gosh, why? A very fucking dangerous case, ain't that? Yeah, sure came close. All right, so I was tailing this guy called Francis the Shoe. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Your attempt to grasp at the answer fails. It seems very close by. Oh, crime, robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police... The plaque on the shelf reads, By browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. No Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz. High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality, Guillaume Bevy, stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. She understands she has erred against the customer and immediately corrects course. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead, take your time, Time. Several maps have been attached to a bullet. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is Lacayu, Ozon, Laurentide. Fast. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. You can on Caillou, Rivershaw, a single black star on Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu on Archipelagos, Croyan Mor Lost Little Pearls of Light.
tiny fires, and 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosine connections to other worlds. Words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods, but perhaps they are gods. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named The Point of the Book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice. It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage, and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. When it's up to your mind to heal yourself, various paranormal. Welcome to Crime Romance. Be welcome. And please, take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. A golden pendant hangs around the woman's neck, in the shape of what looks like a tiny fish head trapped in amber. Oh yes, helps to have an anchor in these times. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be do One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you do What is this insolence? She misunderstood. Of course, no one puts words in your mouth. For something odd. Com <laughs> oh man, oh man, that's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny. God man. <laughs> Thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. Stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Good. We're fighting for a cause. Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking cops and strike breakers together shows authorities are on our side builds confidence rights of people rights of workers to have gainful employment to make a salary and feed their family
memory stuck in the treff. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see Totally betrays his degeneracy. Don't say anything. Size him up first. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm sandwich. You are not in danger, because you are not a threat to me. See a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Hard to say. Your vision is blurred in your cop habit. You look. This isn't case related, you think. The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took place some days ago. It, some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags and then accelerated straight into the fence. The driver proceeded to back out of the yard barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building. Before heading south, must have been in a hurry. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. Somehow that makes you feel scared. You don't know why. I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen in Martinez. With the jam right here on the run, you could follow the tracks. Every time you bring out the measuring. Rene, you are a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime.
you are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter, you'll make it work. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it, probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of already your muscles are. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. Vandalized our game, son. We can't play petonk with five bull. No, no, you don't. Our petonk game is ruined. We want our bull back. Take it easy, Rene. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? Of course, there's arm done, you oil slug. You are as a goddamn bull! Good! Mistakes are forgiven, when men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe- Just talk. It'll smooth things over. Old people like attention. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Uh, no! It was left by heavy artillery fire. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should've fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult. Propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless. This place is a damn beachhead, son. They didn't do it because they didn't like it. They had to soften the commies up first. Yes, the military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling. A sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generation. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Mar. This year is Blood Ground, where Coalition Boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood Ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal, or even if that damn clan Fussel 
have risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. It doesn't. That was 100 years ago. Edward, the suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? They've... Soon, they will forget everything. Him. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. The sight of bullet holes stirs something in you, making you forget the lieutenant's surname. The faded marks are too degraded to draw any forensic conclusions. Where? There? Those are old. These bullets were fired during the revolution, over half a century ago. They do not warrant investigation. Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Shall we go? There must be another, be another way, way into the building. You see a young man on a balcony, nursing. Not looking for any trouble, officer. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us. Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. He was my Sunday friend. Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can t He doesn't reply, gesturing, no, with his cigarette, in the neighbor- My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez? Good local name. Let's go with that. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Time to bring out your secret charm tears and beg him. Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a dog.
trash? Please don't go. I'll even stop smoking inside. Listen, I really have to go. Good luck with the investigation. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to. He could be a witness. Him, there has to be a way of getting. Dirty metal door. This could be a way. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. The door rattles again, but. Stop banging on the door! I'm not letting any more strangers inside. <laughs> the police? Everyone knows the police don't come round here. No. I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting in. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door. With the smoker. You already were there. Didn't work. Good. We had enough problems with bums and drunks and thieves loitering in the hallway. You have no business here. You're well versed in the kind of threatening legalese that implies criminal liability but in fact has no meaning whatsoever. Obviously, look at that vague yet threatening stuff spewing forth from your mouth. I know my right, and don't you mom me, boy. Miss, would it help if we offer to show you our badges? Hold your horses. <coughs> I don't care about your stinking badge. Just come in. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Hep C. And here I was trying to be polite. Just can't win with you pigs. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat 
does not notice her steering. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershot. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Red dyed heavy fuel oil, intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamra. She really did it. She's proud of it too. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy cap. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here, though. Just union cabs. And my name's not Mona. She wants it to be something true and total. Yeah? Lying is cool, I guess. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in the- Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this- Watch your- Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. Pea brain. Someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is a name for anyone who comes from Martinez. Like Jim Jambrock or Raoul Ravagel. Oops. You really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witness's name. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? 
Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a sh- What's he in trouble for? Talk? <laughs> he lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the- Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the- This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk dr That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by even today, half a century after. The star and antlers retains the ability to symbolize the toppling. Also, some so nothing at all yet. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone number 28. This is where the clean Let's see if anyone No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good tomorrow, 9 p.m. Damn. Remember. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see.
Hello again, officers. Ooh. Not only have you found my address. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right? Yes. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me. But somehow, it does anyone in a city like this. If there's pain about any particular home she's lost. Shoot, Piggy. It's what... striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owner. I'm glad to see you here. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. Oh, dear. <sighs> Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that bad. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. She's a negotiator. Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in. But expect her to drive a hard bargain. Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. 
Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or you can recover your badge. Though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and this woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply another... He doesn't let it show, but there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large, and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. The situation might have changed drastically, by the time you locate it. Time is a- You could request a new one from the station, but that would literally take months. I'm sure you will, detective. No, if there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. What I propose is, we ask her, then- Crumpled billboard reading, Samaran butter soaks in the canal. Judging by the size of the impact and the parallel lines of burnt rubber, the cause was probably a motor vehicle. These look like the same tire tracks I saw earlier. In f Side slip marks indicated that the vehicle was traveling up the crater at 35 kilometers an hour. The black marks on the roof indicate that the vehicle vaulted from the crater to the roof of the shack. The panel served as a takeoff ramp. The vehicle soared through the air, hitting the billboard and upsetting the posts. The sign broke the vehicle's fall into the canal. The Samaran butter billboard still looks freshly painted, suggest within the past 70 Still speeding, the vehicle made a loop. There are two good candidates. The Cupri's 40, it's about the right size. And the tire marks look like they came from the skinny tires frequently found. The Cupri's 40 is a very popular model. A very sturdy but light motor carriage. The Linear G20, you'd have to follow the tracks to be sure. The Lieutenant looks on. Any theories about what happened here? What kind of car do you think it was? That's quite likely, from what I can tell. Oh! The traffic hooliganism? I hope not. Fortunately, we are not traffic cops. Should we get back to the murder? You've thought of a very touching story. It's shit, though. Nope, you're all right. The urge is strong, but you are stronger. <laughs> the
The speakers below are banged up at a pair of foul. Those sneakers. Only that's madness. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. Sweet Lord, a whole hour. And you haven't thought about the rum and lemonade in all that time. You've truly extinguished. Maybe later. What is this? Cat, what happened, man? You used to be cool. Get your drink on and your act to go. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This, as you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The o okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garancy Quebec. Please, it's not fun. The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted. You see a heavy steel door. You immediately feel drawn to the color. You do? It's a door. It is quite pretty. I suppose we could look in. Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. Can I help you? What thing? Oh yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frick warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So, I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. You see a heavy st The door does not bug. Still no answer. Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a qu He doesn't like where this is going.
The bed is cold. The window stands. The morning light hurts. Inconspicuous pile of the roofing material because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That there it is. You see a shabby little door. <laughs> what is this then? A tool shed? This is below our pay grade, detective. See that ladder there? It's more of an instinct than anything. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a hat. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. The look in his eyes is a mix of the engineer-like interest and the wonder of a six-year-old seeing a horse for the first time. His eyes traced the crane's contour, as if trying to memorize. Yes, we were in the middle of something, uh, your clock. The clock? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets make? What are we doing? We're awfully close to breaking into the industry, or it could be that we had just ex He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. A tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM. Thank you. 
There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere... Not it. There, he still is, looking. Fuck, does Kuno care? Kuno's Kuno, pig? It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly, the kid's using the third-person perspective as a shield. The fuck are you calling a third person? Kuno's... He looks slightly confused, but proud. He can... Watch out, Kuno! This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his reason. Help! Misters, help! He's having the time of his life. He's flashing Kuno. He's showing his genitals. If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be... No! <laughs> Get off Kuno, you sick fat fuck! No one? Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. This is where Kuno establishes dominance. Help! The pig's gagging him! Kuno can't speak! You put him up to this yourself when you decided to talk to him in the first... Listen to your f friend. <sighs> Kuno owns the fat ass. Help! The RCM is trying to fuck Kuno! Fucking logical! <laughs> Help! The logical pig is fiddling Kuno! Look, f I know you wanted to. Relax. He can't read your mind. He doesn't know you were thinking that. I can. Kuna can smell that violent shit. I know what you were thinking. I'm gonna fuck that Kuna up. I'm gonna shut his shit down. You know- You're nothing! You're a joke to Kuno! Kuno laughs at you! King Kuno! Backing up was a bad idea. Now he thinks he's established- Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch! You're gonna be in this shit with Kuno! No, you're not. We can just leave. Bitch, you're gonna be in this shit with Kuno forever! A peepo is a type of hat, by the way. You don't talk to me about my fucking peepo! You don't know where I come from! You're just Kuno's bottom bitch! Okay, Kuno is kind to his bitch. Ask your questions, but remember... This changes shit. Click, 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 click! You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just gotta fly, pig. Not for you, pig. 
Kuno can't wait to see you get all scared and shit your pants. Kuno can't wait to see you shit your fat pants. That's all there is to it then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old. But it's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? You could use some. Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno! He's gonna use it against you, Kuno! You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Yeah, Kuno plays on Snuff Radio, fucks pigs, live, fucks their heads off. Kuno's a cop killer. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Kuno doesn't... The pig's getting pretty close to me. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pig's come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? I come from the woods, Kutavitu. You don't want to go there with me. You don't want to see what I've seen. Don't be traumatizing here. Get the fuck out of here! I'll die before I squeal. What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal! Get the fuck out of here, face! You got- I'll die before I squeal. Murder was the case, was the case they gave me. I'll die before I squeal. You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the fence. I'll die before I squeal, pig.
Give me a moment. Ask away, policeman. The hell am I supposed to know? Another nut job. I people come and go. They probably just moved or died. Oh, that one is a scientist, a future scholar. I think he studies astrology. Something to do with all those stars around it. The symbol of what now? Huh. I thought Revachal was the capital. The artiste? Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. She leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can... She mumbles some kind of a... I'm no one. If you can call it living, it's barely bigger than a closet. help you with. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Ingredients for what? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well appraised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. Yes, but you won't... The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. Unlikely, officer. I'm talking about the lorries. Once the ingredients reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers, well beyond our grasp. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. Her irises are light green, like the river Esper. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Yes? Excellent. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I suspect the traffic jam won't disperse for a few more days. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. Of course, detective. Hello again, officers. turning into a kind of a oh high-grade narcotics illegal firearms stop time to arrest him can't even get a few jokes past you my man I've got another haul of foul cargo. Mostly sporting goods, tracksuits, and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. 
This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6? Neat. For carrying large quantities of cargo a long distance. There it is again. A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he's spent too long in this lorry. Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the... The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. In his eyes, an unfamiliar longing. It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest. Excuse me? Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know? I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way. The aura of the seven seas. It's on the other end of Le Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentire, off mainland. We've got a little place there. What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. <sighs> is that what it is? This feeling? No, it's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter, smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. You lost your gun? Oh man, that's bad news. Especially here in Marnay's. But, thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone. And I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. stuck in the traffic. The windows are clear. They the woman still had nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is grey like lead. Long way home. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Where am I? Who are you? The smile on her face has disappeared. Rep uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam. The men have the small jewels and everything is made out of plastic. Back in Mezca, during the time of the revolution, the side walls and cafes are filled with the young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture started until you came along, that is. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, Loman. It was early while you, people, were tearing each other apart. This is Gabriel Buenguerro. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you, his head crowned with a wide-brim hat. 
His hair, his... This man's got a hold over her, even 50 years later. You can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. Someone was. They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make? They're beautiful. She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from this strange thought. Why not, Harifa? It's not diamonds. Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I walk? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo. If you know what I mean, then it's contraband, Loman. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad... Bad hand. Hermenegildos' bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. So he doesn't think she's a smuggler? You hear that, Loman? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Nothing. I just don't think... He doesn't want your frail mind caught up in something here. Something unconnected to the case. But... A pal dream is what it is. What do I need drugs for, Loman? What I see, what I feel, the great... The woman sways her wrinkled shell back and forth. Yes, go. Enough. Again, eh? Here to all I'm wondering, man. How can I help you? My friend, I respect the right to roam. The open range awaits. I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a granter of passage. If it's all so simple, why don't the strike breakers just go up the stairs? Aye. Walk right past Measurehead and go... Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini supremacist up there. Walk right past him. Then press the button to unlock the door. Then go past him again. And you enter the arbor through the office. Está. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely important. Or you could convert to a Semini supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. Sure. Continue. Don't say anything. Size him up first. What is this? Merely standing up makes you sweat profusely. Your breathing is erratic. Your own heart. Stop it! You are embarrassing. <coughs> this is display of weakness. Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. You have succumbed to Al Ghul. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Yes. He means alcohol. Correct, my small skull self. Al-Ghul is an ancient Ilmaran poison. 
a parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. It is a trick the desert pygmies played on you. Servitude to Alhul does not explain everything. There are other reasons. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplogroup B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the ham sandwich raid. Show him the ham still got it. Willingly calling yourself a am some wish. How far the Occidental Ablo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop. You will be superseded. Isn't that right? It is, baby. Yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. It is my task to keep the degenerate trunks from entering the harbor. That is right. You should leave this stage of history with dignity. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When the walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art and your microcephalic skulls. He does not so much as glance at the object. Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. Welcome to Revershaw. You hear him yell at a redhead woman visiting the fritter nearby. He must think redheads are immigrants. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. Silence betrays your inferiority. You don't. Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. There must be some friction there. He's keeping it well hidden. Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital. Something your race, naivistic communists, never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is jam. Individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? 
You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? Of course it does. You are a degenerate individualist and a rock and roll rebel. A pawn of international finance, just like the rest of your ham-colored race. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. I can see that. The Simonies are the South Island race. Aplogum A for A. The rightful masters of the Insulindian archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. We are the future. That is all you need to know. I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Seminese women walk into the grey mass on Ile de Fontaine, waiting on immaculate conception from the pay. No, I have heard about it on the radio. He would be appreciative if you did not further chase this line of inquiry in front of the women. I'm from Kuron, and no, it is not just in Remachol. The city is central to the Simony strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture will dominate the world. You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to- I think this racist is better than the last. But the next racist will be the really good one. That will be the- There always is. Race is reality. Welcome to Frit. What's that magazine she's reading? You mean this? This is Pop Stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. Yeah, they're kind of boring, but you know. I don't know. Frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store? I think they think that the extra tea makes it. F um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but. A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what. She scrunches up her. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just, um, I don't really know anything. I mean, not really. Um, no. I, I don't know, really. Um... No need to worry. Okay. Uh-huh.
The tear machine sta- Your bottles clunk into the machine. The tear machine stands in the corner. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste. A colorful display of the bottles wink at you in the light. The smoke there, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth. One. Um, guess not. No. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. But, I guess you already know that. Don't ask. Don't look. Don't do anything here. Just go away. Get back to work. Again, my man. What's on your mind? It's like whatever's going some pretty wild stuff I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town too. Like, they want to keep that money flowing in anything else. Us lorry drivers. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. Hello again, officer. Since the street signs messed up, no problem. Fuck does Kuno care? The fuck do you want with it? Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno's surprised you've still got your head after all that. Don't sweat it, drunk pig. Kuno will keep your nasty secrets. Kuno's not- He's saying you climbed up there. He probably saw you do it. Yeah, that conclusively explains how- Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But fuck you fucks whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. It's okay. The pig's trying to pit us against each other. Not gonna let him do that. That's it. You let him off the line. That was a bad manipulative thing to- Try to fuck my Kuno! <laughs> Try to fuck my Kuno away! Me and Kuno 
are tight. We ride for life. You were too pushy last time. Think this th Just look. While Kuno has no problem being near you, she came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who... Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You can... Fuck you whispering about! He's whispering too. He's going with it. Fuck you! If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pig. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us- She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her so she can't read his lips. Kuno means she killed someone. That's right, sees a killer? Like, actually a killer? His little green eyes are fixed on yours. Are you getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? Sweet talk him, then knife him. She's probably killed a pig, too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. I knew you pigs were too naive for this shit. Good thing Kuno's got her under control. Kuno keeps her calm. A cop would be too large for her to overpower. But a determined child of her size can still kill the vulnerable. The elderly, the homeless, or other. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Fuck knows. She says it's the song of air people or some shit. Crazy people. The fucking Nakis. I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The Nakis and Runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. Kuno falls silent. He does not look at you when he replies. Kuno, there, that's it. That's what Kuno is starting to think, yeah? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. Yeah, she's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Catburn and shit. She does the real deal. Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. Fuck no, she's not me sister. She's just a stray who got in, like a mad dog or something. Yeah, she was just there. What was that, Kuno? She was in the hallway. Dripping wet by the fucking shoe rack in the dark. Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days in the corner every time Kuno went out. I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk. Under a pile of clothes, like a dog. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Or thinks it's fucking Kuno. 
Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno? Kuno S? Two of a kind. Cause she fucking looks like Kuno. No one knows her name. Kuno told you this shit was psycho killer. How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing. Kuno's got this shit under control. Listen, listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I, I'm going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. Do you understand? All right, now we can do business. Yeah, what do you want? Kuno can hook you up with. Oh, don't hook him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. That's right. Kuno's a candy store for pigs now. Get ready to be rewarded. Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishol? In your condition? Like half? A baggy, but like in this vial. Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean. You can barely see it because there's barely any. Okay, Kuno's listening. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that shit back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Just get in the apartment building. Kuno knows you already fucked your way in. Kuno knows everything. Go to room 12, first floor, and kick down the door. Police violence style. Kuno style. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckheads. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you bet. What the hell are you signing us up for here? Okay then. Kuno doesn't.
Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the... F this is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Just a moment. Captain 4, come in, officer. Over. Uh, okay. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell every- 10 four, sir, I'm not hearing your question. What? What is it? He wants to verify the information on- But of course, it says Dick Mullen. High General of the Rev- Tell him to stop wasting- What do you need, sir? Over. Understood, sir. Over. Roger that. 10-10. Ten, ten. Over and out. Well, hello. Oh no, you light reflects. Wow, the gods of mass production. Fine. Yes, it's not all of us. You've passed up your chat. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Until you come up with something at that intersection, I'm afraid I have little else to tell you. But I'll try. Ask. She simply nods. Give me a moment. The waiters are at the end of this hallway, right next to the communal bathroom. You hear someone walking around inside. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk, it's a solid lump of metal, but better whip out those cutters. You won't get very... Yes? A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges, secured to the doorframe. And the place comes with three months' worth of utility bills. No response. The apartment numbers have fallen off the door. Leave. You'll need to equip the chain cutters to enter. Snip right through. No response. The apartment num. You'll need to equip. shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges. Snip. The I know there's no stopping you, but let's at least make this quick. A phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. You pocket the bottle as if it were
bundle of clothes heat on the bed. In the dark, it looks like a nest. Something underneath there is breathing. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Your hand touches a greasy duvet covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There is something alive. You see a 60-year-old, fat, red-headed man passed out from large amounts of... You don't have to take him down. He's already down. Well, judging by the color of his hair... The lieutenant's right. The man's unwashed hair bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. The light from the window falls into his half-open eyes. I think he's still quite bad. I mean, what he has come to. This man won't be feeding his family anytime soon. Not that he was, but... At least he won't be pity. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty, and frozen. It's clear that the person behind them is not awake. Can't you tell? It happens to exceptionally committed substance abusers. They fall asleep with their eyelids still open. Not a pretty sight. Look, he's trying to communicate. The man groans once again, but his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible. And then it dawns upon you, clear, pigs. He said he's trying to call you pigs. His hand falls back on the bed, limp and defeated. A loud snore escapes his mouth. He's a At least he got to say his piece. I'm afraid it is. Look, it moves. And look, the other foot is camouflaged by a striped sock bearing the name Max Tor on the sole. Three, a groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. What is there to do? We could turn him on his side so he doesn't choke on his own vomit, but he's already on his side. We could take him to Remedy or Saint Baptiste, but he doesn't have money for medical services. The arm sauce would turn him down. They don't do charity for people who are trying to kill themselves. Besides, he'd be dead in a few. The pile of blankets grunts miserably. Kuno's Kilo. Here is how we do it. First, you give Kuno Kuno's Kilo, then Kuno gives you... That's how we split it. It's the best way. Street way. Kuno 
Kuno knows what Kuno means. All right. Kuno knew you'd try that sneaky pig shit on him. Tell him, Kuno! Kuno's got brains. This shit doesn't surprise Kuno. So Kuno's gonna give you one more chance. No major fucking ch- Kuno won't take this shit lightly. The pieces are moving, pig. This it's hard to see how not giving a boy a bag of amphetamine would cause some catastrophic cascade response. Hard to see, but easy to feel. Somehow, this will change things. It's not hard to see at all. You hand out drugs to kids. The lieutenant's faith in your judgment will diminish significantly. Tick, 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 tick. Decision time. What's it gonna be? You gonna fuck the Kuno? All right, all right, you fucked the Kuno. Everybody, Kuno got fucked by his pocket pig. Just when we get in our business on, the pig throws it all away. I told you he can't be trusted. I told you, I told you, I told I told you he'd steal the shit. Plenty of kilo, kilo underground, in the tree. This ain't about that. This is about you and Kuno. You mismanaged this shit. Now everything is fucked between us. How are you gonna make this up to the Kuno? In truth, Kuno doesn't really believe there's anything you can do to make up for this. The damage is irreparable. Fuck right there were, fucking three years or some shit. Fuck that shit, Kuno's gonna move underground, red I am shit, ancient shit. Kuno's gonna live in a fucking ca- Yeah, in a tomb, Kuno! The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out. Yeah, we got plans. That didn't change shit, pig. That only made things worse. Fucking social worker shit. It, do it doesn't work, Kuno. Only our shit works. Kuno doesn't fuck... There he still is. Looking right through you.
appalling cloak with possible RCM mod. The tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. Nope, no, that's still too high. Sure, just be careful, okay? Looks like... The tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. No, no. Sure. Just be careful, okay? Looks like you almost strained the muscle there. Pauling cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the rail. Key melody starts. Kudos! Please stop calling here. Grown ups don't have time for your stupid game. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I thought you were. But the doorbell is broken and the bookstore. A single beep indicates that the line has gone dead. This button looks new. Huh. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. Doorbell. What an ominous name for a hair salon. All you hear is static, but you ring the doorbell. But you wait for a minute or two. Looks like someone has melted half the plastic off. You hear static. You can almost hear them breathe. Yes, hello. This is Tracy. She sounds almost antique, as if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. A receiver must not be working properly. My the lieutenant exchanges a look. It's you. Oh my God. I... No. Something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Mr. 
Michelle, just please. Why did you even call? I don't understand. A spot of static over. Finally. She sounds like she's about to cry. She doesn't answer. Silence. The only thing you can hear now. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Silence. No one's home at Fortress. Silence. Nothing happens after you ring the door. Silence. No one answers your call. Whatever she says, it can't hurt. All right. Maybe not healthier. There's a light buzz as you... There's the static again. Yes, hello. Here come the bad vibes again. Wait. Is she... The voice from the intercom does. This is my mind. And then it hits you. She tries again, real or not. Your mirror neurons re her sound. This is where you hung up the call. The you press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. interested in a new okay sir i'll try to answer my name is annette sir my mum her name is plaisance she owns the store she's inside minding the register feel free to step in and browse our wares i'm signaling that the store is open a sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters she covered kind of you to offer sir what could you do to help her anyway Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. School? Well, mine is a big yellow building on Boogie Street. Mum says it's necessary to do... Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being... cursed. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking. Twi Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. Yes. Please do look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games you... Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or... Th mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. You don't look much like a policeman. Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look... More about books, maybe? Welcome to Crime, Romance and Bio... Be welcome! And please, take responsibility for the energy... A golden pendant hangs around the woman's neck, in the shape of what looks like a tiny fish head. I am! The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. She has fine-tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work. Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Ta Wonderful! Did you talk to her? Great! On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books? Her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. As a young girl should be, with the proper attitude. The woman before you scans the store. Goodness, you were already doing good, browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel com- Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves com- She's attempting to mentally direct you towards the shelves. She only wants you to buy the goods. She doesn't care about- 
She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Wow, you work hard. Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out. Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let. That's just what it's like. It ain't easy. But you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules. But you won't lose. You're sure. Sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7. Are you rich? That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. Why? Because of the taxes. G-Man's got his jam cup every time you wipe 98% of all your money. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having... What are you, a racist? Don't be a racist. Be a cool immigrant, ultra-liberal free market advocate. Ride or die. Keep it street. You see a tattered set of curtains and a poly... You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, aside from poking at it, Suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. You do? My God. Even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. 